Good morning. It's Monday, August 14th. Happy birthday, Mom. My name is Fred Slow. Alongside me, my friend and partner in crime, Van Nunley. Van, this past weekend, a professional video gamer claimed that he would take a vow of abstinence after a poor performance in a tournament because he, quote, and are you ready for this? Okay. Indulging in too much sensual pleasures. Is there a more low-key way to say that, yes, I do have sex? Is, is it a vow of abstinence or is it lack of opportunity? Welcome to The Claim on ProView Sports Channel 26. The Claim, Albuquerque, New Mexico's newest sports program, starring Fred Slow and Van Nunley. Hang on. In the next 30 minutes, you'll get caught up on what's important, what's happening, and what you should know in the world of sports. Stay tuned. It's time for the claim. Man, the NFL this past Friday, so it had been Friday the 11th, suspended star running back for the Dallas Cowboys, Ezekiel Elliott, for six games for alleged domestic violence against his, I guess, his girlfriend or ex-girlfriend. His girlfriend, yeah. Fiance. Anyways, the allocation, uh, no criminal actions, nothing charged by the state, nothing going on in the whole world, but player conduct and personal conduct for domestic battery. Van, it is never okay, in my opinion, ever to beat up anyone, Period. With that said, uh, allegedly this did happen between Ezekiel Elliott and his girlfriend. Gut reaction? Well, you know, first off, you know, the, the players negotiated this in the last deal, so they signed off on a six game ban. I don't know if it's exactly fair in this situation. The NFL feels like they have enough evidence. Uh, the courts dropped the case because of conflicting evidence. You know, where, where does this lie in between accusations and proof? Are the six games justified without any court action? Yeah, let me talk to you about collective bargaining real quick. So the NFL as a whole is a union. That union uh, represents itself through primarily former players, and then outside of that they have a legal team which features attorneys and, and those that understand law. With that said, the NFL goes in and they, and they, they bargain wh how they work, who they work right. for, and, right. and the means by which they do it. And, and for years, not represented very well. For years, they they didn't have an outlet um, as as players for whenever there were out, off the field allegations or there were legal troubles where where these players could appeal and and where they could take action in defense of themselves and and they had a chance three years ago whenever they renegotiated uh, the contract without a holdout to to really remedy that and instead they took less practices. Well, you know you, you got to save your body up, you know, especially if you're expending a. A lot of energy punching women. Is, but is Greg Hardy? That's one. That's the point we're trying to make, isn't it? Yeah. Because where, where are your priorities at here, in NFL? And if if you're Zeke Elliott or, or Greg Hardy or Josh Brown or Ray Rice or any of these guys who have who have done, I mean, atrocious acts, just right. acts of violence upon people they care about. And it seems like it's more prevalent in the NFL and any other than any other sport. Like, is it the the aggression? Is it the brutality? Is it the 53-man rosters? Because there's more people, we see it more. Like CTE. It, if you extrapolate it over the NFL, those numbers over society, do they match up? Is it more prevalent in the NFL? What do you think? Oh my gosh, well, yeah, now you're getting to a point of, and we're gonna use obviously Ezekiel Elliott as, as our example here, where culturally speaking, is the, the people that fluctuate towards the NFL, are they more prime or, or akin to beating up other people in their lives that they I care think that, about? that might be the case, especially with Zeke. Um, Ezekiel Elliott, America's running back. Right. Giant Ewok. Yes. Uh, knocked a dude out at a bar. You like that? <laughs> knocked a dude out at a bar in Dallas mm -hmm. uh, about a month ago. Uh, a few months ago, pulled a girl's shirt down. Uh, the assault, the uh, physical assault charges were dropped. Um, all of this is on wow. video. You know, then, you know, all the domestic violence charges. Yeah. When do these guys understand that they're under a microscope and everybody is watching them? Your, your chinks shine brightest, the brighter your spotlight is. And the thing about the NFL and, and Ezekiel Elliott in particular is I'm a trends guy. And we'll go back to Josh Brown. We'll go back to Ray Rice real quick. Uh, Ray Rice got into a situation with his then girlfriend turned fiance turned wife. Um, and there was video evidence. And, and video evidence is about as incriminating as it gets. Sure. Um, but his wife and Ray Rice himself both claim that was a one-off. And then after like a thorough investigation and efforts, and I'm one, 
who I will not, I, I, I cannot condemn someone for making a mistake. I've made mistakes in my life. I can, I can absolutely think less of them and, and judge them, but, but I cannot hold them to that one act for their entire lives. Um, and the way the Rice situation went down, and Josh Brown included, um, these guys said, this is out of character. This is, this, is, this is the example that falls away from the class. And, and the NFL said, yeah, man, one game. Like, we, we, mm-hmm. we believe you. We got you. Uh, we put the due diligence in. Our investigative team is literally former prosecuting attorneys. Right. And with Ezekiel Elliott, like you just pointed out, this is a trends game at this point. Right. He's a dude who regularly and Multiple willing, incidents in a small window. He chooses yeah. to do these things. This mm-hmm. is not... It's not a, a crime of passion. This isn't just like going full speed in like a crowd of protesters. This is like he has done these things over a course of time. And, and with that said, whenever you build up that track record, you're going to get treated like you have that track record. For sure. I mean, just because he's the tallest Ewok in the history of indoor and he helped save the planet. You Which, know, well, and first, don't let, yeah, we can't, we can't take that away from him. Just because you're running high on that indoor money doesn't right. mean you could start punching people in bars. And you know, the Cowboys lately, what well, past two years we got Greg Hardy, right? All of his incidents. Uh, Damian Wilson backed a truck up into a woman, pulled a gun out on a dude. Not acceptable. Lucky Whitehead and his two hundred seventy-five thousand dollar contract was caught shoplifting. Uh, linebacker, turns out it wasn't linebacker him. Nolan Carroll. Yeah, In his defense, you know, it might, not, might not have been him. <laughs> might not have been him. Nolan Carroll, linebacker, DWI. Joseph Randall last year, another two hundred seventy-five. $75,000 contract that got caught shoplifting. What's going on here? And are you super stoked that they're the 90s Cowboys again? Well, okay. I, okay. Jerry Jones says, I'm in the Hall of Fame. I'm going to recapture the former the glory. glory days. Three Super Bowls in yeah. four years or whatever it was. Or maybe it's three in a row. But I, I see what you're saying. Uh, America's Bad Boys. Uh, that go, uh, Trump's America. I get what you're saying. Uh, people sure. people want to choose. People yeah. want to root for this. And it gives us more to talk about. Yeah. I love the anti-hero. For sure. You know, I'm a big pro wrestling mark. Yeah. I, I, Steve Austin was my guy. Yeah. He was we, the, could, we could talk about Cowboys O-line and Zeke's peripherals all day, but this is more fun. No, I, I'm on board. The thing that really freaks me out about this whole thing, and, and we're not today, and we will in the future, we're not going to talk about how over the first three games that Dallas is, this season they're playing the one, two, and three ranked rushing defense from last year. We're not going to talk about how they've done it with, they got guys on their team, Alfred Morris. They knew this kind of thing was going to come down. Yeah. That's not Run today. DMC. That's, yeah. I like what you did there. Yeah. That's, that's further down the road. That's another episode. The thing that really kind of worries me and upsets me is when you're at the highest level and, and if accusatory statements become law and if accusatory statements become, and right now the, the standard is six games for domestic violence, say they come down harder than that, say they come down quicker, you're going to end up in a situation where, and we see this in college, where players are accused of things just so that there will be a punishment to that player to affect the outcome of games. Yeah. Yeah, We're going to be outside of a Super Bowl eventually one time, and somebody is going to say the long snapper for the New England Patriots uh, had these abuses against me, and he's not going to be able to play in the biggest game on the planet, and that's going to affect everything on the field. Right. So, so the process I don't think is perfect. I think obviously there had to be a punishment here. There'll be an appeal process. That appeal process goes to Roger Goodell. So I don't feel like there's going to be a lot of movement. Maybe down to four? I think down to four. Is that your vibe? Yeah, I'm guessing down to four. That's a quarter of the season. That's a quarter of your money. Did you That's want- a quarter of your fantasy points, too. It, okay, he doesn't get paid off fantasy points. Hey, I do. Where does he go in the draft this year? Uh, he's dropping down a round or two. Nothing serious. You draft Ezekiel Elliott. A couple and rounds Alfred later. You gra- no, you grab Darren McFadden. He's number one on the depth chart. Run DMC. That's who you take. I'm a trends guy. If I can have Alfred Morris or... Derek Take McFadden. Both. I'm taking Alfred Morris. Yeah, head your bets. Even the the kid, uh, the young kid, he's got the oh, his brother's a linebacker. I'm drawing a blank. We'll come back with it after the break. But yeah, I, this I don't. This is a big deal to me because legally speaking, he's in the clear. Right. That's not how legality works with your profession. When we come back, we're gonna tone it down a little bit, Van. Just a little bit. Less domestic violence and more fashion talk here on the claim.
Ladera Golf Course on Albuquerque's west side features spacious greens, 27 holes with outstanding practice facilities, and beautiful views of the Sandia Mountains. Nestled at the foot of the volcanoes, our 300-person banquet room and bridal suite is perfect for all occasions. Customize your room with color, chair covers, table linen, dinner, and champagne. Visit our cafe and bar with daily specials and happy hour, plus our full-service golf pro shop. For tea times and more information, call 505-836-4449. Visit the Frontier Restaurant. Due to heavy construction on Central, take lead or coal coming north or south. The Frontier Restaurant. Get your Frontier fix on. Van, we want to make sure we change the pace up here on the claim. Uh, obviously, every single week that we're doing the program here, excuse me, every single day that we're doing daily. Day, day daily shows. Here on ProView Networks and Comcast 26. Uh, we're we're going to give you the national story of the day. We're going to give you uh, something a little more loose. We're going we're gonna to have a little bit of fun, and then obviously we're going to do our best to find local color because that is my favorite color. Um, Major League Baseball announced last week that they will be doing alternative uh, player weekend, colorful name and branding uniforms. Love it. The weekend of August 25th and 27th. And what it is, is they're going to, they're going to, everyone's going to have a different uniform and, and they're going to be uh, stylized and, and other words that millennials use to talk about the importance of of their clothing, I guess. But the logos will be adapted, and then on the back of the jerseys will be nicknames. Um, it should be a fun little weekend for Major League Baseball, breathing life into a game that is really resurged with the youth in America today. Sure. sure. Um, give me your gut on this one, man. Is it? Is, are you excited to see it? Are you going to make time to see at least the highlights of every team? Do you want? You want to see it on the field? Where, where are you at? Well, I absolutely, I absolutely love it. You can see the jerseys up there right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I love it. It's breathing some fresh air into a stale, boring game. You know, MLB, Major League, boring. You know, they cling to their traditions. They cling to their history. You know, the, it's the baseball is the sport where history has the biggest prevalence. Mm-hmm. Um, but I love it. You know, um, not only do I love it because it's um, – breathing life into the sport that's you know kind of dull ish you know not the biggest uh, hip culturally relevant sport right but all the profits from the jersey sales go back into youth baseball yeah the profits from the jersey sales um, and by jersey sales I mean auctions so every single jersey that's worn that weekend mm-hmm. by a player mm-hmm. will be auctioned off on major league baseball PA's website and then the players association is going to donate to they have a charity for youth baseball I think a lot of it is for inner cities with that said I'm going to give you the name of of a player okay and then I need you no excuse me I'm gonna give you the nickname of a player all right that's gonna be in the back of the jersey I need you to tell me who this major league baseball player is Whew. all right let's try it are you ready okay all rise that would be New York Yankees Yankees rookie outfielder Aaron Judge rookie sensation Aaron Judge yes Stickman Stickman you got me there. Stickman is Chris Sale. Chris Sale. Stick, I didn't, ah, Stickman. Long and lanky. Yeah, there you go. He's a human fungo bat. And forgive me, I'm new to the Southwest, but I'm going to try to get this one right. La Pocienta. La Pocienta. Yeah. La Pocienta. I don't know that one either. Jonas Cespedes, and I'm not Cuban, so Ooh. I'm not really following that name. Kid. K-I-I-I-I-I-D. Ah, that is Angel's center fielder and best player alive, Mike Trout. It absolutely is. Miggy. Miggy, I'm going to go with Miguel Cabrera. Corey's brother. Corey's brother. That is uh, Mariners outfielder Kyle Seeger. Kyle Seeger, the yeah. brother of Corey Seeger. Who is the older brother? Usually, uh, you know, the younger brother gets the tag. Riding the Cody train, Cody Love. Cody Love. I don't know Cody Love. Cody Bellinger. Ah, I should have guessed. Would not have came up with that one. Toki 2. Toki 2. Toki 2. Oh, I know this. This is. Um, Joey Votto. It is. Joey yeah. Votto, who is not afraid to walk 90 feet. No. Joey Votto, he will do it all. And, and obviously the list goes on. Should be Walkman. Like yeah. Walkman. Remember the Walkman? Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, the, the thing I love most about this is this is clubhouse mentality. Uh, from the time you're the youngest dude playing at, at you know three, four, five, six years old, all the way up to major leagues, 
No one calls you by your name. Everyone calls no. you by your nickname. Yeah. And not necessarily do all fans, broadcast, people outside of the clubhouse know what your nickname is. For sure. And uh, as long as it's PG, right. it's going to, uh, that week can be featured on the back of jerseys. One jersey that's never had a nameplate on it is... The New York Yankees. Historic New York Yankees, the pinstripes. Never once in the history of their franchise had names on the back until well, this weekend. Well, do not worry because a famed producer, Dana, showed the uniforms. The, the pinstripes will not be touched, guys. They, it is an alternative jersey. I've heard a lot of outroar and, and cry mm -hmm. about manipulating history and, and how ashaming it would be, and, and people just want to really unite the right on this, but I don't think that it's going to affect like the lineage because this is like it's like a child jersey. It's like a that's what I wear to bed. That's like a yeah, sleepover like, shirt. Yeah, for sure. So no, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, so my final thought on that is, is uh, hey, purist, mm -hmm. can, is it okay we have fun one weekend? For sure, let's have fun. <laughs> can we start celebrating? Can we just start doing more bat tosses? Can Oh, I got beef with one nickname. Okay. My main man, all five, five and a half of them, Jose Altuve, went with Tuve, the last name Tuve. Homeboy's nickname is Mighty Mouse, which is one of the best nicknames in sports, and he goes Tuve. Hurt my Demetrius Johnson, UFC fighter, is Mighty Mouse. No, he's not. Who's more famed? Jose Altuve. I think you're absolutely right. Yeah. Demetrius Johnson. That's why I said a, that out loud. He hasn't fought a fight in six months or something. I didn't know he was. He's like a. Uh, bit I'm kidding. I know exactly. Super who he is. fly. He's great. Is he's that great. what he is? Pound for pound, the best alive. Yeah, but there's no one else. I heard his Joe Rogan say that. I have no proof at all of that. You can be the pound-for-pound pound best fighter in the world if you're 105 pounds. There's no one else 105 pounds who wants to fight you. Because math. By the way, yeah. a, friend of, a personal friend of mine, Demetrius Johnson, I, I'm not trying to say anything negative. Name drop. He, here we I, go. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not sass right here. I'm not trying to Stephen A. Smith this whole thing. Okay. But I cannot bash Charles Barkley because I've shook his hand one time. Man, those are some low standards there. I'm just kidding. I love me some Charles Barkley, though. I'm absolutely kidding People's about that. Knuckle did, you, uh, did you look up where your favorite team is that weekend? Which weekend? Um, players weekend. Oh, d duh. The Houston Baseball Astros. Yeah, where are That's they That's my at? answer for everything. Are they at home or are they in the row? Oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know either. Yeah. One, the new interpretation of the uniforms is uh, the hats. I think the hats are huge. Hats are really cool. Um, I have bought, like, every year Major League Baseball, every year, um, as of recently, Major League Baseball has released uh, themed hats for, like, the 4th of July, Memorial Day, Veterans Day. They, they have stuff out that you can buy or yeah. whatever. And obviously they found a lot of success with, like, uh, pink pink apparel for, like, yes. Mother's Day and blue apparel for Father's Day. Yes. And that, go, obviously, the, all that stuff's uh, auction off for charity as well. But the alternative hats, I think, are the big sell here because yeah. the logos for every Major League Baseball team are tweaked in just a way where they're just a little more fun. There's a yeah. little more life to them. There's a, a Rick and Morty about them if, if you want to sure. talk yeah. to the kids these Bright days. Bright neon colors are going to appeal to youth more. Yeah. They're going to sell a lot of hats. Well, it, and it's kind of got like a minor league baseball feel to it mm -hmm. where like these teams can can have that thing that's going to relate to those kids mm -hmm. and and you can have it for a long time you've been to and i know here in albuquerque we have the isotopes obviously but i grew up in st louis missouri i watched a lot of youth i watched a lot of professional baseball in my day like hat giveaway day of like a unique hat like the plaid hat or like the the whatever it's that, the biggest turnout of the year it every is year. that's the one you no. keep and, and here we are as we're looking yeah, over them the hats. Love yeah them. so if it's not an adjusted logo it's an adjusted color scheme and and i think it is just I don't know, a fun, a fun option for fans and, and a cool thing for baseball. Last thing we're going to mention is the patch on the sleeve. The patch on the sleeve uh, is who Major League Baseball players want to thank for helping them get in the game. I like it a lot. Yeah. Um, if, if you don't choose your mom, oh, by the way, happy birthday, Fred's mom. If you don't yeah, choose my your mom's mom, birthday was yeah, this past week. See? 58 years old, mom. Love you with all my heart. Yeah, if you don't put mom or possibly mom and dad on your sleeve, you're doing something wrong, and you better have a really good story not to use it. Yeah, I, feel, I feel like you can absolutely do like Coach Roy. Sure. Yeah. Or He's you, the one guy. Yeah. Or if, or if you're like me. You better have a huge impact, though, not to put your mom. I'm I gonna, love you too, Mom. I'm going to be that dude real quick. Okay. Okay. Here we so go. let's say you're, you're coming up and you're a Major League Baseball player. That's not a good look. You're going anti-mom here? I'm not going anti-mom. Okay. But I'm going, I'm going uh, clubhouse camaraderie. I'm going fellowship. Okay. Okay. Big deal in baseball. Huge deal. Mm -hmm. So let's say you're a young and up-and-coming stud whatever position player. Okay. Okay. And, and you get up to the major league level and, and you're in your who, – who's like a really young, just impactful player? Who's the kid for the Dodgers? Uh, Corey Seager? 
Oh, uh, Cody. Bellinger. Uh, Cody Bellinger. Cody Bellinger is, Cody Bellinger is the young outfielder for the for the dad. The, Beautiful swing. The Doidges. Yeah. So what? Great if, lift angle. So what if bat speed through the zone gets through the zone? <laughs> so yeah. what about if mm -hmm. Cody were to because he's such a young dude and he's playing with some guys who've been in the league for? What if he puts like Clayton Kershaw on there? <laughs> like, thanks for inspiring me, See, old man. Man, that's what it, that's what it, you better have a really cool story to match it, and you better make sure that story gets out there because your mom's gonna be mad, or Auntie Carol, whoever bought you your first glove, or whatever it may be. You got a big a, opportunity to have a cool shot out right here. You better make the best of it. Other possible inspirations I could have had for starting my baseball, obviously Chipper Jones. Chipper Jones. Chipper Jones a is a huge reason I got into baseball. Um, the greatest actor of all time. We were talking about this yesterday. Yes. Is that who you're going with? Yes. The Kevin Costner. I feel like Kevin Costner is the reason that a lot of kids play baseball. Waterworld, wildly underrated movie. I don't mean that. It's terrible. You're talking about The Postman. Waterworld is a cinematic masterpiece. <laughs> That's a hard stance, the man. I don't, I don't know about that. The Postman is garbage. I'll go 10 cup. I'll take 10 cup. Well, t okay. I don't watch movies Bull twice. We know Bull Durham, of course. Okay. The hierarchy of Ke top five Kevin Costner out. films. Okay, Stu, Kevin Costner. <laughs> We're doing Kevin Costner. Number one. The Bull Durham. Bull Durham. Okay, duh. We started this. Uh, strike that, reverse it. Number five. Number five. For love of the game. Decent. Decent. Stop. Decent. We have different opinions on that movie. We could have different opinions. Dude. Four, Dances with Wolves. Okay. Three. Field of Dreams. Okay. Or do you, what do you slot in two? I, I'm going Field of Dreams two. No, 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 no. Okay. Number two is Waterworld. Uh, and then number one, of course. You left out Tin Cup. No, I'm You're going to put Tin Cup, Tin Cup number one, and then Bull Durham 1A. Uh, Kevin Costner had put out, a, I'm in St. Louis, Missouri. Kevin Costner had put out a movie, and uh, I don't remember the name of the movie, not important. And as Kevin Costner's in town, He's doing the morning show, the local Fox morning show. And this is like the loose, like zany Fox morning show with, yeah, you know. Hey, guys. Yeah. Hey, good morning. No, it's 73 <laughs> in the studio, 84 outside. Hope you're enjoying the day. Like, it's that show. Okay. So. I don't watch that show. No, it's it's mm -hmm. it's not good. But Kevin Costner somehow, his publicity guy has got him on the show. Okay. Anyways, as Kevin Costner comes on the show to promote whatever movie he's promoting, um, it's also Kevin Costner's birthday on this this specific day. Why is he working on his birthday? Well, he's, he's a go Get her. You're like so, the 13th biggest star in the world. We will come back one day with the biggest stars in the world. Let's do that. That's Na a good conversation. Neymar will be on there. I like so, that. So, uh, so he's on the program. He's he's talking about the movie. He's talking about being part of St. Louis and the importance of baseball in St. Louis and blah blah blah. Huge. So, uh, so the morning show host brings. They're like, well, hey Kevin, we heard it was your birthday. Okay. So happy birthday, Kevin! And they start giving Kevin all these like very regionally specific gifts to St. Louis. Okay. So they're like, here's like a Cardinals hat. Here's, and here's a like a yeah. Here's like an emos thing of toasted raviolis sure and here's like a roll of provo court of bud light yeah oh yeah. yeah like just gooey butter cake and if you don't mm. know what it is google it and then put it in your body i've heard of it so so they're giving all these things to kevin and kevin is just like it's like he's been accosted like kevin the look on his face is disdain and hatred and kevin costner says the morning show host he says you guys really love yourself here Ooh. 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 ice cold Ooh. kevin Oof. Firing away. Um, That's the equivalent of like us like handing out like miniature balloons, yeah. and green chili. Yeah, the yeah. miniature balloons look as if the balloon is a green chili shape. Yeah, even yeah. better. And yeah. They all say Frontier on them. Like well, Everything's sponsored proud, by Frontier. Proud sponsor. We should be sponsored by Frontier. You watching Frontier? ProView Networks. Yeah. Proud sponsor. Yeah. Um, in conclusion to Major League Baseball uniforms, will you buy a hat? A hundred percent, I will buy a, a hat. player's weekend hat. Yes, the Houston absolutely. Astros one. You know I will. The Cardinals one is uh, does not have much change. Um, the Doyers one is pretty good. Check out the Doyers one. Is that how they say it here? Doyers. The Doyers. See, I, I'm new, mm -hmm. but I'm learning. Spanish heritage. We're big Dodger city here. Fred actually new guy. Only been here two months. Brand Transplant new. from St. Louis. Yeah. Excited though. I'm Duke City repping over a decade. Because Duke City was the LA affiliate. Correct. For it, years and years for and years, years. And years. Years and years and years. And then the past. We're still a Dodgers town, even though the Isotopes are the Rockies. For the past 15. Rockies? Is that right? Three years. Only three yeah, years. Only with three the years. So, it was LA, so the Isotopes have been here for 15. Longer. I don't think that's right. No, Isotopes for 15. The, even when they were the Dukes, it was, it was the Dodgers all the way up yeah, into three years ago. That's the part I get. Yeah, okay. Major League Baseball. Dodger City. <laughs> It's my favorite sport, yeah. and it's not even close. 
Ben, you and I are not getting rich off this, but there are a couple guys who have gotten rich in their lives, and this past weekend, they put a sizable bet on Mayweather McGregor. When we come back, how much was it, who made it, and what was it for? McGregor. For 55 years, people have bought trucks from Tillery in Los Lunas. We have a great selection of vehicles, the quality service department, and some of the best deals in the state. But most importantly, we found people prefer to buy trucks from people who actually drive trucks. Tillery is a proud supporter of ProView Sports Network. Locally owned and operated, located in Las Lunas, right off I-25, exit 203. Garden Sorts Team Sales is a proud supporter of ProView Sports Network. Get into the game. Garden Schwartz Team Sales features fine products and apparel from Wilson, Shutt Sports, Speedline, and Russell Athletics. We offer custom embroidery and screen printing services for all of your school or club needs, from team uniforms to school letter jackets. Specializing in all sports and serving all communities, from big schools to small schools, from up north to down south, or all points in between. Garden Schwartz Team Sales for great prices, friendly staff, and quality products. Call Garden Schwartz Team Sales today at one 800 880-7767. That's 1-800-880-7767. Since 1939, Garden Schwartz Team Sales is a proud supporter of New Mexico Youth Athletics. An $880,000 wager. That's a lot of money. Was placed on the McGregor Mayweather fight coming up. Oh, I just, I'm drawing a blank. Last weekend of this month. Thank you. Yeah. Last weekend of this month. The bet split into two parts, two $440,000 bets. At the time of the bet was placed, the uh, I think it was minus 900. I think it was, yeah. To, to uh, Floyd Mayweather. As it should be after this Conor McGregor video has surfaced this weekend of him like, Pretending to know how to box, he's in. He a seems lot. like tapping him on the he's head. He's in a what's, lot of trouble. What's going on with that? It's gonna be. It's gonna be rough. The bet was made by, and I will give you one guess before I tell you, who made an eight hundred and eighty thousand dollar bet in favor of Floyd Mayweather. Uh, must be like Burt Reynolds or something. The Maloof brothers, my friend, who on the Sacramento course, Kings. Of course, it was the Maloof brothers. <laughs> Gavin and Joe Maloof. Albuquerque connection, Maloof brothers. From the producer booth. <clears throat> Apparently the Maloofs are from Albuquerque. I didn't Shout know. out to Dana, the producer booth. I did not know. Thank you, Dana. Gavin and Joe Maloof are so confident that their neighbor, Floyd Mayweather Jr., will beat up on one Conor McGregor. They placed an $880,000 bet on it. That bet should return it at or near $120,000. The Maloofs are then donating it to charity. That is a cool move right there, the charity part. You're going to put the best money in the world on the worst dude in the world to help a good cause. It kind of balances itself out, right? There's, there's a juxtaposition about it to where you're willing to try to earn, see, I, roughly it would come back at like 1.04 million or whatever. Right. So, so whatever works out. But yeah, they're going to put really, they're, for a very good cause on a very bad person. For sure. I mean, they, they legally had to split the bet in half because you can't have a profit of over a million dollars. Is that correct? Something to that nature. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, so yeah, Vegas said we're going to put it in two, but it doesn't matter. So if... If Mayweather uh, best is McGregor, then, then that's it. That's it. It's over. It, that, that's, they've won the money, and they've helped, they've helped some families. That's great. You want to make a pop bet real quick? Sure. Oddsmakers.com has it. Will Conor McGregor throw an object at Floyd Mayweather during the press conference before the fight? Oh, a press conference counts too? Yeah, and all these are even money except for one. I want to say, I'm going to say no. I think he holds it in until the fight. I'm going to say no on that one. At minus 625 in favor of McGregor. Who drops the first F-bomb? Oh, McGregor. For that's not, sure. That's not, even good. that's not a bad. Don't take that bet. That's not a good bet. Six, if Floyd Mayweather... I would say 100%. If, okay, go ahead. If Floyd Money Mayweather, Mayweather knows that bet is out there, the second oh, he gets out there, he's just going to drop the F. Uh -huh. <laughs> Will Conor McGregor or Floyd Mayweather storm out of the press conference? Uh, Even money. Neither. Neither. I'm going neither on okay. that. They're going to be face-to-face -face this whole time. Oddsmaker.com. Will either Conor McGregor or Floyd Mayweather be knocked out 
during the press conference. There's no way. Ooh, nah, I'm just no. going no. I'm, I don't think anybody's going to get knocked out during a fight either. Oh, I don't either. Yeah. No, I think they're going to dance around and put on a show. Yeah. No, these dopes are going to we need, we need to We need to talk, talk way more Mayweather yeah. McGregor. Because we, this has been one of the most entertaining spectacles in the history of sports. Well, that's what I'm about. I've been to WrestleMania, I've been to Super Bowls, I've been to World Series. And that's exactly what it is. And that's exactly what yeah. it is. This it, is. This is WWE yeah. at way higher stakes. And they actually punch each other in the face. The sports value here, not great. The entertainment value through the roof. Off the charts. We got one in the books, my friend. All right. Make Preseason, sure you, game one. Preseason, game one. Preseason game Preseason, one. Game one wrapped up. I think I think we did great. I think it's a good look. Same van time, same van channel tomorrow. You've been watching the claim on ProView Networks. Thank you to Dana TV. Thank you to everyone involved. And see us tomorrow morning. Peace out, Burke.